University in Prague. Um, so, uh, and he will speak to us today about uh, palindromic factorization of uh, rich words. Okay, thank, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm just wondering because I'm not so experienced with this Zoom. I do not see the list of the participants. Is are he? Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. Here it is. Okay, that's fine. Uh, my mistake. Um, okay, so uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and I will start with my presentation of um, one of my papers that I that I have published in this year. I have submitted it already in the last year. So it was visible on archive and this year it was accepted and uh, published. So maybe some of you already uh, know this paper, but uh, still I think this, this presentation can be useful for you. I will give you some more background for the motivation for such paper and uh, also maybe some explications can be easier. Uh, during this uh, presentation, comparing to the to the reading of the paper. Okay, so uh, I will start with some uh, couple of definitions, uh, as usually, so uh, so that we are sure that we understand the notation and the and the terms that uh, I'm using. So uh, the first thing is some alphabet denoted by the letter A. Uh, with a finite number of uh, letters. So I think this is clear. Uh, next, I define a finite and infinite word. Uh, I think the definition which is stated here is uh, no surprise for you. A yeah, finite word, a finite uh, sequence of letters, infinite word, infinite sequence of letters. Uh, in this case, I consider only a right infinite word. Uh, the other infinite words are not uh, important for us, this presentation. And moreover, I define the empty word, which is denoted by the by the letter by the Greek letter epsilon. Uh, okay. Next, what we will need is the definition of the reversal of a finite word. So, given a finite word. Uh, as a sequence of the letters U1 till UN, the reversal is the word where we change the order of the letters. So as it is stated on the in the file, uh, it is the word UN till U1. So this is the reversal. I think the name of the, the name reversal is self-explaining. And now when we have the reversal, we can define a palindrome. It is the crucial, it is the essential term for our presentation. So if the finite word is equal to, uh, to its reversal, we call such word a palindrome. Also, we define that the empty word is also a palindrome. Uh, this is not the case in every paper, but for my papers, or in, for, especially for this paper, I define uh, empty word to be a palindrome. Yeah, here are some uh, two examples of the palindromes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for this first page there is no uh, no difficult information. I think this is easy for understanding. Uh, on the next slide, I define the factor of some word. So given words U and V, we say that V is a factor of U if there are words P, S, such that the word U is a concatenation of the words P, V, S in the order as it is written. Uh, yeah, here also in some papers I have seen, uh, it is sometimes it is called sub word or a, a block or, there may be some different terms for this uh, concept why I use the term factor. Next, uh, also yeah, a palindromic factor is a factor that is also a palindrome. Well, it may seem, seem obvious, but I prefer to state it explicitly. 
because I will use this uh, term palindromic factor so, so that we are sure that we understand what I mean. Okay, and now we came to the definition of the rich word. Um, a word U of length N is called rich if the word U has N plus one distinct palindromic factors. And here in this case, uh, we count also the empty word as a palindromic factor. Now, this is uh, also important in this case, also in some papers you may see, you may find some other definition which says only N distinct palindromic factors because the authors do not consider the empty word to be a, a palindrome. But uh, in my paper, I use, I prefer this definition. Mm, the definition of the richness can be extended also for the infinite words. In this case, uh, we say that an infinite word W is rich if every finite factor of W is rich. Yeah. So this is the definition of richness. Uh, for those who are not familiar with this richness, you may wonder about this uh, definition, why n plus one, but I will explain it uh, on the next uh, slide. Um, Anyway, here is an example of a rich word. Uh, you may verify in this case that there are eight uh, distinct palindromic factors. These are stated uh, below, as I said, including the empty word. Okay, I think uh, this is also clear. So I go to the next page. Uh, okay, well, and this is the what I promised to you. There is a uh, uh, there is a proposition or a theorem which says that a finite word W of flanks N contains at most N plus one distinct palindromic factors. Here also counted uh, including the empty word. So this is the explication for the name rich. Yeah, so the rich words are the words which are rich in the number of uh, palindromic factors. So these are the words which have the maximal number of them with the regard to the length of the uh, word in question. Uh, another important or useful proposition concerning rich word or another property, every factor of a rich word is also rich. Um, yeah, this is not, I think it is not obvious, but it is known, it has been proved. Uh, next important property of rich words is this one. The longest palindromic suffix of a rich word, W, has exactly one occurrence in W. Uh, we say also that the longest palindromic suffix of W is Uniocurrent. Uh, again, this is not obvious, but uh, it is known. It has been proved. Uh, I think yes. Here is the reference uh, to the paper where you can find these uh, properties. I think, uh, including the proofs, also or at least there is a reference to another paper with the proof. But all these uh, properties, which I, I used in the paper can be found in this, in the reference paper from, from the authors drawn by Justin Perillo. I hope I pronounce the names correctly. Okay, by the way, the concept of the richness and the rich words are quite a new concept. Uh, you may see the, the reference paper appeared in the 2001. So, and uh, the rich words are not much older than this, so this is quite quite new uh, topic. Yeah, I go to the next slide. Okay, I will need uh, the definition of a complete return. So uh, given a word W and the factor R of W, we call the factor R a complete return to U in W 
if R contains exactly two occurrences of U, one as a prefix and one as a suffix. Uh, yeah, this is the definition. I think uh, it is clear. So the factor R is a prefix and the suffix of another word, and it, is, it has exactly two occurrences. Yeah, I think. This is quite no quite good known. Yeah, and uh, why I stated this definition, because there is an interesting characteristic property of rich words. And uh, this property says that all complete returns to any palindromic factor in the rich word are also palindromes. Uh, this has been, uh, yeah. You may found uh, the proof in the paper, in the paper palindromic richness, where this reference uh, is this reference. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if the proof is in this paper. Uh, I'm not sure at least, but the, the property is stated uh, in this paper and the proof uh, is referenced at least there. Okay, so these are the basic properties. And there is also one important property, it is this one. A factor R of a rich word W is uniquely determined by its longest palindromic prefix and its longest palindromic suffix. Uh, yeah, this property has been proved in the paper, a new characteristic property of rich words from the authors uh, Butsi, Luca, Glenn, Zamboni. Also, I hope I pronounced the names correctly. If not, I apologize. Uh, yeah, and this property is uh, important for us. I will give you an example. Yeah. Uh, in the example, you may see two rich words, both of them have the same longest palindromic prefix and it is 010. And both of them have the same longest palindromic suffix, namely 0110. Yeah, but the words are different. So this property asserts that there is no rich word which contains these two words as factors. Now, I think this far from being obvious, so I think it's a quite interesting property. And uh, I use this property to prove some of my results. Um, so I will come to it later. So this is this property. Uh, I think from the example, it is also clear what it says and what it is about. Okay, I will I continue. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, now I think it is the right time to say something about the motivation. My paper, which I present today, is called palindromic factorization of rich words. So uh, what is it good for to factorize rich words into palindromes? What is the motivation behind? I think it, it is not uh, necessarily clear. It is not, uh, I think it is not a natural question in combinatorics. But there is another open question concerning rich, word, rich words, and it is the enumeration of them. Uh, for a given length, we do not know how many rich words we have. So in general, we are looking for some good upper and lower bounds uh, for the number of rich words. Uh, and the enumeration is a quite natural question in uh, combinatorics. I think it does not really need uh, the explication of a motivation. So it is given that we need to enumerate rich words. And in one of my papers, which I, uh, I think it was, which was published in two, 2017, I think, I improved uh, an, exist, an existing upper bound for the number of rich words. And for this improvement, I used a palindromic factorization of rich words. So the palindromic factorization of these words uh, turned out to be useful for another open question and it is the enumeration. So the enumeration is the, 
is the primary motivation for, for my paper or for my research. So uh, on the next pages, on the next slides, I will uh, I will present some results which concern enumeration of rich words. So the first attempt or the first significant attempt to enumerate rich words was given by uh, Vestim uh, and he gives some recursive lower bound and also an upper bound on the binary rich words. It means the rich words on the alphabet with two letters. Uh, so yeah, this uh, okay. I I don't I didn't even state it explicitly what what the bound is. It is just a note that he gives some result concerning enumeration, and it was in the in his paper extensions of rich words. Uh, okay, so now I need this uh, definition. Uh, I will denote by R n the number of rich words. Uh, of length n over a given finite alphabet. Uh, yeah, and better, better lower bound can be found in the paper of uh, Guom, Shali, and Shur. Uh, and they constructed some set of rich words and uh, they enumerated this set. And based on this, they could uh, derive some good lower bound for the number of binary rich words. This bound can be seen uh, on this slide. Uh, yeah, so this is the, currently this is the best uh, lower bound for the number of rich words, or at least I, I'm not aware of any, any better lower bound. Okay. And also in the same paper, uh, an upper bound has been presented for the number of rich words. And it is uh, this one, it is the exponential upper bound, uh, yeah, which is stated here. It was uh, derived using some uh, simulations on computers. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly uh, what Rubinchik computed and proved, but uh, this upper bound is uh, some simple consequence of his, uh, of the results of Rubinchik. Yeah, so at the time, I think it was in 2014 or 15, these were the best uh, bounds on the number of rich words. These are quite different. The upper bound is exponential. The lower bound is sub-exponential. So there is still, still there is a lot of space for improvements. Uh, and also in the same paper, the authors presented, conjectured uh, this result on the, on the gross rate of the number of rich words. So they, they conjectured that the gross is uh, sub-exponential, simply said. Uh, so and here is the reference to the, to the paper where all these three results have been presented. Okay, so it was 2016. So it is not so old result. Okay, this is the, okay, this was the first motivation for the palindromic uh, factorization. It was the enumeration. And another motivation is also the palindromic uh, factorization itself. Mm, for this, I will define uh, palindromic lengths of a finite word. In this case, it is a general finite word, not necessarily rich. And palindromic lengths of a finite word is defined as the minimal number of palindromes whose concatenation is equal to the finite word. So it is the definition of palindromic lengths. And there is a uh, conjecture, which was stated in 2013, uh, which says that for every aperiodic infinite word, the palindromic length of its factors is not bounded. Uh, so why I present this conjecture and this definition, uh, this conjecture attracted, attracted quite a lot of attention. You 
can find uh, well, quite many papers trying to solve this conjecture. The conjecture is solved for some for some languages and for some uh, subsets of finite or infinite words, but it is still open. However, I want to say uh, that the palindromic factorization itself is also interesting uh, question, which is which is researched. So even without the enumeration, the palindromic factorization is it itself is also uh, worth publishing, worth publishing, and worth some investigation. Yeah. So basically, these are the two motivations uh, for my paper: the enumeration of the rich words and the palindromic factorization uh, itself. Yeah, here is the reference to the paper where the conjecture can be found. <clears throat> okay, okay, and now I uh, I come to to my paper which I presented in uh, 2017 on the number of rich words. Um, I will briefly state the main results of this paper because this is the first paper where the palindromic factorization of rich words have been used and allowed us to improve the upper bound uh, on the number of rich words. So uh, here is the reference to the, to the paper. It was published and presented also in this conference, uh, Developments in Language Theory. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, I stated the property of the rich words that uh, every rich word has a uniocurrent palindromic suffix. It is the property which is known, which has been proved. And uh, based on this property, I proved this simple lemma. Basically what is important on, in the lemma is that a rich word can be factorized into a distinct palindromic uh, factors. Well, this is, uh, I'm not sure if this is the same obvious consequence of this lemma. Uh, yeah, so there is a palindromic factorization of rich words such that, um, as it is stated here, basically it implies that, uh, that a rich word is a concatenation of distinct palindromic factors. And this is the important thing. Yeah. Based on this uh, special factorization of rich words, I defined the UPS factorization. Uh, and this is the factorization uh, used in this lemma. Uh, I think it's not so essential for this uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, in general, uh, UPS factorization does not need to exist. Yeah, of course, in general, when I have some finite word, it is not uh, clear that there is a concatenation, that the word is a concatenation of distinct palindromes. And moreover, in the form which is uh, stated in the lemma. So for rich words, it is clear the UPS factorization exists, exists, but in general, it is not the case. It is, uh, yeah. I continue. Yeah, and the the crucial thing, yeah, really the essential thing, is this theorem. Yeah. So the thing that I have that I can factorize a finite word into distinct palindromic factors implies that the number of the of these factors is slower than this uh, formula. Yeah, and it basically says, yeah, theorem says that the rich word W is concatenated from a small number of palindromes and small means this uh, limit behavior of this upper bound. Uh, yeah, so using the fact that uh, the palindromic factorization is uh, contains only distinct palindromes 
allowed me to prove that the upper bound on the number of palindromes is slower than this uh, formula. And this formula with, in this, uh, has this property, has this limit behavior, which allows us to interpret, to say that uh, the number of palindromes is small. Yeah, at least small comparing to the length of the word in question. And this is the crucial idea behind uh, my improvement of the upper bound for the number of rich words, because uh, when I have the palindrome, then I need only the half of the word to be able to determine the second half of the word of the palindrome, because yeah. Uh, it's obvious. And if I if I say that a rich word is a concatenation of small number of palindromes, to be to simplify the thing, I can imagine it's just one palindrome. Then I need only half of the word to be able uh, to construct the whole word. And again, as I said, every factor of rich word is again rich. So again, this half of the palindrome of the half of the rich word is again rich. And as such, it is again a small number of palindromes concatenated. Yeah, and so on and so on. And using this idea, I, I was able uh, to improve the upper bound for the number of rich words. Uh, here it is. Uh, yeah, here uh, I in the paper I used this sum uh, of this. It may seem uh, it is somewhat somewhat abstract, but it can be interpreted as it is written here. It is the length of the word, word which is constructed as a concatenation of all palindromes of lengths uh, smaller than t. Yeah, t some integer and q powered to uh, e divided by two, it is the number of uh, palindromes of lengths i. So this sum is the length of the word, which is constructed as a concatenation of all palindromes of lengths lower than t. I think, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's easy to see. And one of the results in my paper, uh, is uh, this one. Yeah, I think uh, for the current presentation, it is not uh, necessary to explain in details this, uh, this result. Uh, yeah. Here, I just wanted to say why I presented uh, here for this sum, uh, it is possible to find some close closed results, closed formulas, which express this sum, because this one is uh, quite simple. It is geometric series uh, multiplied by I. Uh, so, so in the paper that I presented uh, in the 2017, this was not the difficult part of the paper to prove this, uh, to use this, to use this uh, relations. I will come to it later when I present the current paper. So uh, finally, I define this uh, kappa, kappa n, which is the upper bound for the number of palindromes in the factorization. Yeah, and then as I said, uh, I derived in the in the paper I've derived this uh, quite uh, let's say complicated formula. This is the idea that I expressed uh, simply that uh, a rich word is a small number of uh, palindromes and every palindrome, in every palindrome, I need only the half of the word. This is the explication for the, for the division, division, divisions by two in every, every sub factor in this uh, formula. And uh, yeah. Now oh, I don't uh, currently. It is not necessary to explain uh, this formula in details. I just wanted to say this formula is uh, a bit complicated. So the final result of the paper from the 2017 is that is uh, this one. Yeah, uh, I was based on this. I was able to derive this simple result, and this result says 
that the number of uh, rich words grows sub exponentially. However, due to the thing that the previous formula is quite complicated, up to now I was not able to derive some sub exponential upper bound. So we know that the growth, we know that there is some sub exponential uh, upper bound, but we have no such concrete example of this sub exponential upper bound. So this is the paper from 2017. Uh, the important thing is the that I used palindromic factorization of rich words and that every rich word can be factorized into distinct palindromes. And it turns out that the number of these uh, distinct palindromes is small. Uh, so this is the main message of the paper and of the previous slides. Uh, yeah, so I continue. The next, uh, the next result that I needed and that I applied in the last paper in the palindromic factorization is the result of my paper from uh, 2021. And it concerned the upper bound for the palindromic and factor complexity of rich words. So uh, I think, okay, let's say, uh, I define uh, here, I define the set of factors of length n of the word w. Uh, well, uh, I think I can skip this one. I will have a look on the time. I think, okay, I think I will skip uh, this one. Necessary. Well, this is the, the result of my paper from 2021 uh, is this one. I proved, I derived an upper bound for the factor complexity of rich words. So you may see this is a like quasi polynomial upper bound. Uh, and this is something that I will apply. In the previous paper from 2017, that I just presented, I I I had to uh, I had to count that the number of palindromes. Uh, okay, I considered all the palindromes, regardless if they are rich or not. So I considered the that there are q power two i uh, divided by two palindromes. This is what I showed to you. So this is quite inefficient because there are many, many palindromes that are not rich and they needed only rich palindromes because as I said, every factor of rich word is rich. So it was, uh, it is enough to consider only rich palindromes. But uh, at the time there was no uh, good upper bound for the number of rich palindromes or for the number of uh, uh, for the factor complexity. So in the paper from 2017, I considered all palindromes. But I don't, it is no more necessary to consider all the palindromes. It is, it is enough to consider only to use this upper bound because I know that in a given rich word, the, it is not possible that there are more rich palindromes than this upper bound because this is the rich, uh, this is the factor complexity, this is the upper bound for the factor complexity. Uh, so basically in the paper that I will present today, uh, I improve, I use the same ideas as in the 2017, I just use this better upper bound. Uh, and yeah, I will show you what, what are the results of this improvement. And also uh, I would like to uh, emphasize one thing. Here you may notice that this upper bound for the factor complexity is much lower than the lower bound on the number of rich words. I showed you on some previous slide, uh, the lower bound on the number of rich words. And this, uh, this one is much, much lower. So it means that from the, given the 
given the language of rich words, it is not possible to squeeze them into one rich words. Only a small portion of rich words can be squeezed into one rich word. Yeah, this is some, well, some interesting notion, some interesting property of rich words. So, yeah. So this is this result, but important for the paper of today, it's just, uh, I have then, I have the upper bound for the factor complexity that I will use. So, and now I come to the paper that I wanted to present today. As you see, it was uh, published this year in the discrete applied mathematics. Uh, yeah, it's a quite short paper. So let's start. Uh, okay, I defined uh, the LUF, uh, length of the UPS factorization. Uh, yeah, it is the factorization that I showed you before. It is the factorization in the distinct uh, palindromic factors. So it is the number of these palindromic factors in this factorization. Mm. And the main result of the paper uh, is this one, is this upper bound for the palindromic factorization. In the palindromic factorization that I used in 2017, you may remember the, the formula was n divided by logarith logarithm of n. So this, this, is, uh, this is a significant improvement of this bound. And currently this is the best upper bound for the palindromic factorization of rich words. And not only this, I hope it will be possible to use this uh, upper bound to derive some good upper bound for the number of rich words. This is something what I'm working on and uh, yeah. I have already some ideas. I suppose in next months, uh, I will present some result in on archive concerning this. But yeah, but for the moment, uh, we have just upper bound for the palindromic factorization of rich words. And it is this one. Also, I present, uh, I allowed myself to present uh, one conjecture. It was based on my experiments and some uh, derivations. I, uh, I guess that uh, the upper bound could be improved to this one, to the square of n. Yeah, but this is just a conjecture. Uh, for the moment, I have no no concrete idea how to prove it. Of course, one of, one of the ideas is, uh, can could be the improvement on the of the upper bound of the factor complexity that I presented. Uh, yeah. but, uh, it seems quite difficult for the moment. Uh, okay, well, this is some uh, bunch of definitions that I will need. Um, what is important? Um, because the, the upper bound for the factor complexity uh, was not really uh, simple. There were some uh, too many constants in some form, which is not useful for me. And hence, for this reason, I defined this constants, constants C2 and C1. It is, uh, yeah, it is uh, on purpose, it is defined in this uh, funny order. First, I define C2 and then I def define C1. It has a reason because uh, to define C1, I need C2. Uh, but then uh, using these constants, I derive this one. Yeah? I, and for this uh, result, it is better that C1 is the first constant in the formula. So this is the reason. So uh, the upper bound for the factor complexity that I presented uh, is now presented in this. Uh, simple form using two constants and which is quite readable. Uh, everybody can, uh, there is no no complexity, no difficulty be uh, uh, hidden. It's just n powered to a logarithm of n with some constants. And this will be much, uh, much more easy to deal with. So this is the meaning of these constants C2, C1. Also, I defined some other constants, alpha, beta, and g that I will 
use in some other results. Uh, yeah. So let's go on. So here I uh, I show that there is some uh, simple form for the factor complexity of rich words. Uh, yeah. And again, uh, I already explained this uh, sum. And here it is the same explication. I just replaced the number of palindromes. As I said before, I, I had to uh, count all the existing palindromes. So there was uh, Q power to I uh, divided by two. Now I can use this uh, upper bound for the factor complexity, rich word, there cannot be more rich palindromes this, this, than this upper bound. So now I deal with upper bound with this sum. Yeah, the basic difference to the previous paper is that uh, it is much more difficult to find some good upper and lower bound for this sum. Yeah, in the previous paper, it was quite easy. It was, uh, yeah. It was some simple one of many results in the paper. Uh, no extra attention was needed, but here I think the main work, main job in the current paper is to find some good upper and lower bounds for this sum. Uh, because definitely there is no closed formula for this sum or it is not known at least. Uh, so this is the main challenge. Of the of the current paper, otherwise the ideas basically are the same. So, what I proved. So first lemma that I show is this one. Uh, I show some uh, lower bound. Uh, yeah, I will not spend too much time here. So just uh, bear in mind that uh, bear in mind that I have some lower bound, then uh, yeah, the lower bound is quite uh, complicated uh, to be able to deal with this. So I investigate the limit behavior of this, uh, of this lower bound. And in the limit behavior, I uh, simplified this, uh, this formula to the, to the one below the, yeah, the below in the limit. And then based on this, uh, and then as a cor corollary of these, uh, of these results, I was able to find this, uh, let's say simple upper bound, uh, lower bound on the sum. Now this is, this is something which is already, uh, easy. This is basically just a constant. Uh, yeah, so the sum which I presented divided by n is uh, bigger than some constant, which is bigger than one. This is the important message of this corollary. And this is already something which is uh, yeah, easy to deal with. Yeah, so quite a portion of the paper was derivation of this, uh, of this relation. So this is the lower bound. And then also I need, uh, I needed an upper bound for this uh, sum. Here. Uh, yeah, so I derived also an uh, upper bound as I remember it was not that difficult. Uh, yeah. Here you may notice what is maybe what may be for the first look confusing. Uh, is the upper bound in the sum because I somewhere here, already here, I introduced in this uh, lemma a new function sigma. Yeah, sigma, is, which is a function from the nature of numbers to nature. Now, actually, it is a mistake here. It is a function from nature of numbers to real numbers. Uh, and using, yeah, and then using this function. So this function is a, is a function of the length of the word in question. Uh, here I use the constants alpha and beta. Uh, yeah. So this is the function sigma. So uh, it was introduced in this lemma already. 
to be able to simplify the the lower bound on the on the sum. So using this function sigma, I I obtained I got some lower and upper bounds on the uh, on the sum. And now uh, what I needed is this result. Uh, for this, this, this result is not about the richness or not about the rich word. This is a general, general result. I used this one already in the previous paper in 2017, but it was some something uh, which was not explicitly stated probably, but during this uh, research for the next paper, I realized this is something which is more general. In this uh, formal statement, it is quite, uh, yeah, quite boring and uh, not obvious what it is about. So I involved also this uh, interpretation. Uh, so let's say we have two sets of words of any finite words, not necessarily rich. These are the omega and omega with bar. And then uh, I have the functions omega and omega with bar, which, uh, which count the number of words of given lengths in these corresponding sets, omega. Yeah. And now I consider two words. Uh, yeah, the sets omega and omega with bar are finite. This is also important. And now I consider two finite words, W and W with bar, which are concatenations of all the words from these corresponding sets, uh, omega and omega with bar. And now the previous lemma, this one, this, so let's say complicated one, says just that uh, the word W with bar is longer than the word W. Uh, so uh, this is something, uh, yeah, I think maybe it may seem obvious if you think a little bit about it, but uh, I prefer to state it explicitly and to prove this. Uh, it was some, it is some idea which was used already in 2017 and it was used again. Uh, and based on this, I was able to derive uh, the upper bound on the, on the palindromic factorization. Yeah, so using this idea, uh, I proved this theorem, which says that if I have a, uh, Okay, I didn't define the RW, the set RW is the set of rich words. So if I have a finite rich word W uh, of length N, and if T is some, uh, some, some uh, positive integer, and if the first sum is bigger than N, so it means basically I concatenated, I concatenated palindromes and this concatenation is longer than n. Yeah, so if I have such a parameter t, then I prove that the, that the number of the palindromes in the concatenation of w is lower than this sum. So actually this theorem explains why I needed the upper and the lower bounds on, this, uh, on the sum. In the, in the statement. Yeah, and this, this theorem was uh, derived based on the previous lemma. Um, yeah, so now, so now I have all I need. So it's, I just mix all the results that I presented up to now and I get, uh, and I get the, the results that I already shown, that I have already shown on the beginning of this uh, paper. So this is to the paper. Now on the last uh, slide, I present some uh, open questions. So uh, using the upper bound for, for, the, uh, for this palindromic factorization, I guess I have already some ideas how to do it. Uh, so I expect to prove this upper bound for the number of rich words. So this would be the, 
this would be the first uh, sub exponential upper bound for the for the number of rich words um, i promise nothing uh, this is my expectation that i uh, should be able to prove it or i think it should be possible to prove it based on the results that i just presented so this is just uh, this is just uh, one open question or open problem and also my uh, conjecture for the number of rich words by, uh, by the way i showed also the i showed you also the conjecture of the uh, of the other authors of, of uh, Shur and Shalim, and this uh, conjecture is worse. So I'm not so optimistic as uh, as my colleagues, uh, but I think this is uh, something which is almost provable. So I think we have enough enough results to prove it. But yeah, so this is the reason I'm not so optimistic, and why my conjecture some somewhat worse is than. The, in the other conjecture. So this is the first thing. Um, yeah, and the other thing um, concerns the improvement of the upper bound for the factor complexity of rich words. I showed you that I proved that the factor complexity is bounded by some quasi polynomial functions, means that uh, in the exponent there is a logarithm of n. So I wonder, so if it would be possible to prove that the bound is polynomial. So it means that in the exponent, there is some, just some constant uh, depending on the size of the alphabet, but not on the N. So uh, I don't claim that it is, that there is such upper bound. Uh, yeah, I think because in my proof that I use, there is still a lot of space for some improvements at least in some parts. So I wonder if could be, if it could be also polynomial. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, that's all for my side. I thank you for the attention and I give the word back to Narat. Oh, thank you very much, Yosef. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No, so everything think... was clear. That is <laughs> yeah, I think it was clear. It's, it's fine. I, I'm happy about it. <laughs> uh, do you have um, Do you have any ideas for um, improving the the lower bound constructions of the rich words? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, not. I, I spent already some time with this question. And uh, yeah, personally, I think it's much harder, much more difficult than the upper bound. Uh, yeah, no, not really. Um, All right. Um, I'll just check again if anyone has uh, has thought of a, a question. Uh, if not, um, thank you again, uh, Joseph, for. Uh, 